Okay, so what you're looking at is a bowl of crispy fried chilies and really not much else. This stuff is called xiang la cui. It's a classic snack from the Guizhou province because obviously it takes some true chili heads to find a way to munch on hot peppers like their potato chips. But anyone that's familiar with working with chilies could tell you that making something like a chili chip isn't as straightforward as it might seem. See, dried chilies are naturally kind of hard and chewy, and on top of that, its pigments can degrade pretty fast in hot oil if you're not careful. So this relatively simple idea, a crispy chili chip, ends up taking some cool technique to pull off well. So first, let's talk chilies. In Guizhou, they'll use a chili from Zunyi called Zidanto, or bullet chili. Now, we don't have any of those handy, and I'm 99% sure that you don't either. So you can really use any type of dried chili you like as long as it's fresh. See, when we were first testing this, we first tried these, the bog standard sort of dried cayenne that are sold at our local markets here in Guangdong which have been stuffed in a bag for God knows how long. They lost their color almost immediately after hitting the frying oil, and the flavor wasn't too great either. So we ended up using these, Guizhou chicken claw peppers, which kind of taste like a cross between cayenne and cashmere. They're not traditional here, but they did work best for us because they were the freshest chili we had. So really, feel free to use our bowls, cayennes, whatever's convenient, but for best results, just use a sort that you might actually like know when they were harvested or something. So then, just grab 90 grams of your chili of choice and snip off the stems and tips. Then cut that at a 30 degree angle to get one inch pieces. This is cut at an angle so that the filling can more easily slide into the chili. More on that in just a second. For this amount here, snipping these can definitely be a bit of a chore, so absolutely enlist any available friends or fiancés. Then just pour enough hot, boiled water to submerge your now snipped chilies and let those sit for about a half an hour. So right, filling. See, chilies aren't starchy or anything, so they won't get all nice and crispy without a bit of help, here in the form of some flour and sesame seeds. So that'll be six tablespoons of sesame seeds, raw, untoasted, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, three tablespoons of cornstarch, and one teaspoon salt. This will coat and slightly fill the chilies to give them some of that missing crunch, so just set that aside for now. Back to the chilies. Unless you're some kind of masochist, it's a good idea to de-seed. Now for most chilies, arbols, cayennes, heaven-facing, zuni bullet, whatever, you would probably de-seed those when dry. We just had to do this now because dried chicken claw are like super wrinkly, and so it's a lot easier to de-seed when wet. But either way, now just let the chilies drain and dry for about 15 minutes. After that quick breather, grab the biggest bowl you have, a popcorn bowl like this is perfect, and toss in the sesame coating in your chilies. Then coat those by continuously pulling from the bottom up. This slight twisting motion allows some of our coating to enter the chilies, which is what'll make this feel crispy. In the end, you're looking for something more or less like this. So now, we can fry. In a wok, get about three cups of oil up to 130 centigrade and drop in your chilies bit by bit. This will lower the temperature, which is fine and expected. Just keep your flame high enough so that your oil stays at around 90 to 100 degrees, which was medium low on our stove. This might feel like a very low frying temperature, and that's because it is a very low frying temperature. Hot oil will scald your chilies. Now, depending on the type of chilies you're working with, there's going to be this massive variance in how long this will all take. After about 8 minutes, if you're working with less than fresh chilies, they'll already be cooked and crispy. These guys, though, we're just getting started. See, the timing is going to completely depend on the moisture content of your peppers. What we're waiting for is the moisture to evaporate, which is why our frying oil is right at 100 centigrade and no higher. For many of you, I'm guessing your chilies will be done at about the 15 minute mark, but for us, these Guizhou chicken claws were just starting to get stiff at that point, so we gotta keep on frying. At the 25 minute mark, the chili was finally starting to get crispy, and you can start to see a couple chilies beginning to lose their color a bit. At this point, much of the moisture is already evaporated, so our frying oil is starting to quickly inch up past 100, we like to take these guys out once the oil gets up to about 130-ish, or roughly three minutes after that point. So then lay those out on a paper towel lined tray, and then these are ready for seasoning. Now this seasoning mix here is awesome, and honestly really makes the dish. To make it, first toast a tablespoon of Sichuan peppercorn and a half tablespoon of fennel over a medium-low flame for about two minutes or until they start to smell real nice. Then transfer over to a mortar and toss in a teaspoon of salt together with a half tablespoon each of sugar and MSG, and grind that all together for about two minutes. Now just sprinkle that seasoning all over everything, give it a quick mix, and remove the paper towels. 
Continue to toss for a couple minutes so everything's good and cooled down. And with that, your chili chips are done. Just put any you don't devour immediately into an airtight container to store. Uh, so in Guizhou, together with this crispy chili, uh, people would put other crispy deep fried stuff in, for example, peanuts or the small dry fish or meat jerky. So you can use this as a base and then put stuff in that you think that it may work. So all right, uh, check out the red link in the description box for detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon, and of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.